There you are now, welcome back to the workshop and on today's episode something a little bit different. I thought I'd take you along for the fault finding exercise that we had to do for this 1275 GT race car. So some of you may know uh, if you're a follower to the channel, we went out racing just over a month ago and very early doors in our uh, exploits we had engine failure and it was head gasket. We changed the head gasket in the field retorked everything took the car out again and within a few laps we had head gasket failure a second time the result was we put the car on the trailer we brought it back to the workshop we licked our wounds for a few days and then we took the engine out and we stripped it i'm going to show you the head gasket first and let's talk a little bit about it so if we look at this head gasket we can clearly see that we had a failure here across cylinder four and three the second thing we notice here is the bluing and distortion here between cylinder one and two. We look at this side of the gasket, we, we see the fader point here, but we don't see so much of the indication of bluing. The gasket was fitted to the engine in this orientation, with this side down to the block and this side up to the cylinder head. When I looked at this, I got the idea that one of a couple of things was happening. The first failure that happened out at the racetrack and where we changed the first gasket was a cross here between cylinder one, or sorry, cylinder four and the outside of the engine block. So it failed across the gasket here. Immediately, I started to think that we had a problem with the surface finish of our engine block. The second time, I didn't strip it at the circuit, I brought the engine back, I brought it into the engine shop and I stripped down the engine in the engine shop and found that the gasket this time failed between cylinder number one, or sorry, cylinder number four and cylinder number three. This raised the question that we were getting cylinder uh, gasket or cylinder head failure randomly. That doesn't happen. So surface finish became less of a worry. Myself and the machinist who does a lot of work for me, um, Westward Engineering, had a chat and we think we came up with definitely one of the reasons for surface or for cylinder head gasket failure. One of the things I want you to notice is the misshapenness of the gasket, specifically where two and three and one and two would be. And the gasket looks pretty good here between the center cylinders. So one and two here and three and four here, you can see a misshapen uh, form to the gasket. If we put the gasket on the engine block, we also start to notice something else. Billy can give you an overhead view of this. It'll, you should see it. There is huge overlap on the bore. In fact, all the way around, the firing ring sits over the edge of the bore. On measuring this gasket, we found that it's actually, after it's squashed, is less than 73.5 millimeters. In fact, it's 72.9. The pistons in this engine are 73.5 millimeters. Now, if you'll remember back to the discussion I had about the engine being out, I said that the pistons were coming slightly up out of the bore and I was thinking maybe they were hitting the cylinder head and that's why it was failing the gasket. But actually, if we look, what we can see is witness marks on the gasket where the piston clearly hit it. So the piston would have came up and it actually touched the gasket. It came up and hit the edge of the gasket. The result of this is glaringly obvious when I do this. I can actually pull the gasket apart, separate it. So I get my nail in there you'll see I can separate that firing ring. Now, I should not be able to do that because the way this firing ring is constructed is it's one piece of metal which is rolled all the way around the gasket. So that ring, that firing ring is actually a one piece of metal. So it's split. And what we think happened was the piston came up, hit the firing ring and split it 
and then the gases were able to track across the soft inner core of the gasket and once they did that they failed the gasket in this sort of very spectacular fashion. I said since I had the engine stripped and I was at the machine shop what we would do is we would run the surfacing machine across the top of the block and just see what the surface looked like. At 0.1 of a millimeter we seen a big shadow in this area in other words the cutter was missing it it wasn't hitting it, hitting it but it was clean pretty much everywhere else so we decided to take another 0.1 off and see what came up. When we took the second 0.1 off the block surface came up clean so the, there was a shadow in this area indicating it was slightly lower than the rest of the block so certainly that didn't help our uh, campaign at all but it certainly wasn't the cause of the problem the cause of the problem was the pistons hitting the firing rings in the gasket the cylinder head when we skimmed it amazingly this cylinder head has done less than probably 15 hours of racing since it was skimmed last and amazingly when we skimmed it we still seen a shadow in this area now we took very little off again 0.1 or 0.2 of a millimeter but we very definitely seen shadowing in this area here indicating that there was some distortion in the cylinder head we gave it a skim and it's clean as a whistle now and the surface is really really good we're really happy with the surface finish on both sides so what is going to be the solution the solution is going to be twofold we have another set of pistons for this engine these are a Wiseco piston uh, that I had custom made for this engine uh, as you can see it's on a much longer rod it's on a six inch rod as opposed to the original uh, rods that would have been used in the mini it's on a forged i-beam six inch rod now interestingly these are the rods that sometimes you'll see on ebay or places like that i said that this engine was a test engine and it's exactly that i've had a lot of questions from my customers over the years about these I'm going to call them chinesium rods but that's what we're going to call them because we're not really sure as to the origins of them you see a lot of them on ebay some good some bad some indifferent so i've bought a couple of sets of them and i've been trialing them in these as i call them donkey engines they're not really donkey engines so much as works engines they're engines that allow me to trial new ideas new theories and see what works and what doesn't work and for the most part i have to say that our theories have been coming back very well this engine is producing really good power but this is definitely a problem that showed its face and needs to be sorted skimming the surface of this and skimming the surface of this is going to mean we will have really good gasket faces but we need to figure out uh, what we're going to do with these pistons coming out of the top of the block luckily i have a, another brand new set of these pistons in stock i bought two when i got these made and what I'm going to do, I contacted the guy who made the pistons for me. Well, the guy who helped me spec them, the engineer who helped me spec them. And he, with very certain confidence, said we can easily take up to a half a millimeter off the top of these pistons completely safely. No problems whatsoever. The engineer uh, who helped me with the machine work on this, because he has a really top class uh, machine, with really high quality uh, ability to cut these gasket surfaces incredibly smooth so we got them done out of house uh, gave me some good advice he said if you're going to skim the top of these pistons in the lathe check and see what the actual finish of these pistons are in the first place these have a very slight radius rolled on the edge of them and we reckon that was just simply done not with a radius tool or anything like that but actually just a light maybe uh, three or five hundred grit sandpaper just barely rolled over the edge so we're going to replicate that we're going to put these pistons back into the motor with the crankshaft and we're going to bring them up to the top dead center and we're going to measure how much out of the board are now sticking we're going to bring them actually down flush now where they where they actually sticking up out of the bore well to just put myself right in my head before I actually stripped this engine to bring it off to be machined, I went back and measured again. And believe it or believe it not, these pistons were sitting near as damn it, 
flush with the top of the block. The pistons uh, four and three were less than 0.1 of a mil up out of, so 0.01 of a millimeter up out of the block. I think they were 0.06, 0.06 so 0 0.06 or 0 0.05. They were less than, um, I suppose, less than uh, I would have expected to cause any problems. But when I look at the gasket intrusion, how far into the piston this gasket has gone, or how far the piston has intruded into the gasket, it is well, well more than that 0.05 or 0.06. It's well deeper than that. So that leads me to believe that when this motor is at high RPM, the piston is actually coming up out of the bore more. Now one of two things could be causing that. It could be crankshaft or it could be stretch in the conrods. So the question is, at high RPM, are these, have these Chinesium rods got a little bit of stretch in them? And that's why we're seeing the effect of the piston coming up and touching the gasket. Is it flexing the crankshaft? It, it kind of makes sense if it was the, these parts of the piston here, because that's where the crankshaft is least supported. It's most supported here in the center and out on either edge here, but least supported in here. So if there was whip or flex in the crank, that's where it's most likely going to be, in between the two bores where there is less support. And what we might well actually be seeing is, is that the crank is lifting up there at those two pins and allowing the piston to come further up out of the bore. So what we're gonna do as a solution to this is we are going to take, gonna put the piston back in and we're gonna measure it now after it's skimmed and get an accurate measurement for each piston. And we're gonna bring each piston 0.05 below the top of the bore. So that we know at TDC, every single one of these pistons is 0.05 of a millimeter. So half of a tenth of a millimeter below the top of the bore. With that, we're not only gonna do that, but we're gonna change gaskets. Now that we have this super duper finish on both surfaces of the block, we can look at a different gasket, which I'm gonna show you now on the block. So this is a multi-layer stainless steel gasket. And what I want you to see is, is that you can actually see, as I put this gasket down, that there is metal either side of the gasket. So we've got metal on this side and we've got metal on that side meaning that the actual bore of this gasket is bigger. It's got a greater size bore. What that is going to do is it's going to mean that the gasket has a much better surface to sit on. It's also multi-layer stainless steel, so it will deal with much higher temperatures and much better, um, uh, or, or much less changes in temperature. There's something else I want to talk about in this gasket, but just before I do that, I want to take a moment just to thank you all for tuning in again this evening. Everybody who is watching the video, you are most welcome. If you're new to the channel, have a look around. We have loads of mini content, a bit of Land Rover stuff and a bit of racing as well. Have a look around. If you like what you see, maybe think about hitting that subscribe button and watching some more of our videos and getting alerted to them as they come out. To all my regulars, you are most welcome. Thank you very much for tuning in again today. Don't forget to smash that like button. And I'd be really interested to hear people's thoughts and opinions on this in the comment section. There's no such thing as uh, bad uh, advice. There is only advice you listen to or don't. It would be nice for us to um, develop our thoughts on this. I run an open channel here and I am of the absolute belief that none of us are done learning. Everybody out there has to learn. I'm putting this out to you guys to show you my experience and I love hearing your experiences back as well. Together, we are much stronger than we are all apart. And that's what I think the brilliance of YouTube is, that we can use the collective mind of all the people out there that are in this to come up with solutions. I know I read a book by David Vizard, and I'm sure loads of you guys have read that book by David Vizard. And he talks in that about running the pistons dead flush with the top of the bore or even slightly out. 
One of the things that isn't mentioned in that is about the gasket. Now, to give him his credit, he does say very clearly in the book, if you're going to run your pistons at the top of the bores or slightly sticking out, you must be very certain of all of your dimensions. Maybe some people wouldn't take one of those dimensions as the head gasket dimension. Maybe that is where I have made the error. Maybe I didn't critically think about this head gasket and how when the cylinder head comes down, it's going to squash it. And the squashing of that may well bring the um, firing rings from sitting on top of the block out onto the tops of the pistons. That's certainly not something I ever did think about. It was a dimension that when I put this gasket on the block before I compressed the cylinder head and others, before I torqued it, there was plenty of room all around the piston. But after I brought it in, compressed it, and it went through a heat cycle or two, starting up and running, obviously the gasket changed shape, and that change of shape was enough to allow it come in contact with the piston. So I wanted to put that out there to you guys so that you guys would see a place where an error can happen. And it is one that was costly to us. We ended up missing a race day over this, um, and that is something that is not cheap. When you enter a race, it costs money, and it costs money to get there, and it costs money on tires and fuel and all those things. So if this can help other people to avoid this, I am delighted, and I think uh, it should be worthwhile having it out there in the internet world. I said I was gonna say one more thing about these gaskets. This is the multi-layer stainless steel gasket from Mini Spares, which is very similar to the Kometic gaskets that I've used over the years. I wasn't actually able to get a Kometic gasket, I was only able to get this one. I suspect this gasket may well be made by Kometic. It looks identical to the ones that I've got from them before. There is one thing that I need to tell you about these gaskets. They require an incredibly high quality surface finish to work properly. And I'm gonna show you now why that is the case. I took a gasket off another customer's engine that had one of these on it, and I know well the surface finish wasn't good enough. And I'm gonna show you the failure mode. Give me one second to get that gasket. Okay, so this is the uh, gasket that I took off the customer's engine, and I just want to show you the failure point. If you come in here a little bit closer, what I'll show you is that one of the layers has actually completely burnt through. The, the gap here in the middle of it, and that's in the center cylinders. I can tell you straight out, the reason why that happened was because the surface finish of the engine block was not fine enough. These use a, an, an unusual material. I think it's Viton. It's, it's, it's a kind of like a rubber coating, uh, and it, it, it's on the gasket, and it is what allows the gasket to seal. The other sides of the gasket seal to each other with that same material. So it's three layers. You've got a stainless steel layer in the middle and you've got these two uh, Viton covered layers either side. So when you compress this inside the engine, this layer seals to the cylinder head, this layer seals to the engine block, and that layer seals to, this, to the liner in the middle, and that layer there seals the liner in the middle of that. The three of them to compress together gives you your seal. The surface finish here, has to be incredibly high or else what happens is you get leakage across that surface area. You can clearly see on this gasket where it wasn't sitting properly. You can see these sort of shiny areas. See one here, you can see one there in the middle and you can see it here on the outside edge. And what that is showing you is that when the gasket was sitting in the engine and the engine was running that it was not sealing properly. The top side doesn't show those marks at all, and I know the cylinder head on this engine had the proper surface finish. The block didn't, but the head did. So my pointer to you is, people ask me all the time, are these multi-layer stainless steel gaskets good? They are phenomenally good if you have the right surface finish on your cylinder head and your cylinder block. Another thing I am going to remind people about is, is that sometimes the head gasket is like a fuse for the engine. If something isn't right in the engine, the compression is too high, you're running too much ignition, or your fueling goes lean, 
The head gasket generally tends to fail before something else like a piston, a valve, or something serious like that. If you use one of these multi-layer stainless steel gaskets, they are so incredibly tough that if the block is sealing properly and the cylinder head is sealing properly, the piston, the valve, or something else will fail long before one of these gaskets fail. So think very carefully about using one of those. You would want to be absolutely sure that every other specification in your engine is on point and is completely safe. And then you could introduce a gasket like that, that you would then know that you're not worried about fueling or ignition or any of those. I'm happy to use one on this race engine because this engine has gone through a couple of dyno sessions. It has done some time on track and I know the fueling is spot on. Everything looks lovely. The pistons have come out looking absolutely perfect. Absolutely no signs of detonation, no signs of too much compression. That lovely color on top of the pistons showing me that the fueling is exactly where it needs to be. All of the valves have come out looking good and the engine was running cool. So what that tells me is, is that the setup of this motor is perfect, the compression is right. So I'm happy now to go ahead and use this stainless steel gasket. If this was the first time I was building this engine and it was an engine that I wasn't sure of the specification, I would much prefer or recommend the likes of the BK450. You might wonder why I didn't use the BK450 and I used this gasket. Well, if you remember back, there was a shortage of BK450s a while ago, and this was the only one I had in stock. We were up at the racetrack, we are in a pinch, we said we'll stick it on. That's the AF470. We said we'll stick it on, it might get the race out of it, we might not. Unfortunately, we didn't. So previously, BK450s are a very, very good gasket, and if you have your clearances right and you've got good surface finishes, then these gaskets do work really, really well. They are much more forgiving. So if you're not 100% sure about your surface finish, then the BK450 will more than likely seal. Whereas if you use something like this Kometic gasket, if your surface finishes aren't right, it more than likely isn't going to seal. But I'd love to hear what people's thought is on it and let me know what your experience is. The last thing I'm going to finish this video out with is I want to show you this. This is the center main bearing from the engine. So if you guys are avid followers of my channel, you have watched me line bore this block in my own Colchester lathe. We got tooled up actually at the start of this channel in order to do line boring on this engine block. And I was thoroughly delighted when I stripped the engine to see that the center main bearing was absolutely mint, as if I put, put it in the engine brand new. That, that bearing is absolutely where I expect it. You might see this little light shine here and here, on this edge and this edge. I completely expect to see that. The fact that it goes all the way around the bearing, 360 degrees, indicates to me that's perfectly fine. Where that shine comes is when this engine is off, that is the bearing sitting in the cap. When the engine is off, the crank, the oil eventually seeps out from underneath the crank and it comes down and it sits on the bearing. When you crank the engine just before it starts, the, the actual uh, gudgeon pin, or the, sorry, the, the bearing pin of the crank will rub on that bearing for a split second until oil pressure comes and then it, the crank will float up out of the bearing. So that shine, no problems whatsoever. The fact that it's even and all the way around, I'd be completely happy with it. But the bit that tells me this bearing has been working absolutely perfect is there is no discoloration or wear marks on the bearing shell. It's exactly where I'd expect it to be and it is indicative of a bearing that has been floating perfectly in its oil. So, pat on the back for Paul, managed to line bore an engine block in his 1930s Colchester in his garden shed in the side of his house in ye olde country Ireland. So the, what I wanted to say by that guys is, is we are a big exponent on this channel of get out into your shop and work. And I hope that is a, a, a nod to you guys that if you take your time and if you tool yourself up well and spend good energy researching a project, 
you can have really successful outcomes. Yes, we had problems with the engine, that's fine. It's a development motor. We're happy, we have found three reasons why that gasket had failed and we have fixed those three reasons. What we're now at is, let's build this motor back up properly, let's put it back in the car, go racing and win some races, because that's what we're going to do. Every time we solve a problem, we make the engine more reliable, we learn why we had failures and we mitigate those failures in the future. Now we've learned that we've got to keep those pistons down the bore slightly, we've got to get those head gaskets so they line up properly and we've learned something about squish and we've learned something about surface finish on engine blocks. All of that learning is well worth happening. That'll stick out, we won't make that mistake again and we will be more reliable and we'll be more efficient as a result of it. Thank you guys for tuning into the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you on the next one.